G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews today, FPV. I'm looking at two systems here. We've got the ProSight, the HD Vision Pack from ProSight. Now this is high def. It's not true high def, it's 720p, but that's a damn sight better than a lot of the existing standard definition FPV video systems. So I'm going to look at this, um, which is kind of state of the art at the moment, and I'm going to compare it to uh, the best you can get out of standard definition FPV video. So I'm going to be looking at the run cam, the 16.9 run cam. I've got the um, Foxia 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. Now most of these video transmitters are pretty similar, but I've got the Foxia one here for review, so we're going to use this. And I'm looking at the Triumph antenna. This is recognized as a pretty damn good antenna, so we're going to use this as the, the video transmitting side of things. And I'm going to compare the two systems on a number of points, such as uh, obviously the quality of the vision, the amount of video lag there is, which is important in some aspects, such as mini quad racing, the amount of latency can be an issue. I'm going to look at the size, the weight, the complexity, a lot of different aspects of using these two systems side by side. And ultimately, we'll also look at the value because, I mean, these are not cheap. This is, you know, pretty affordable. Is it worth paying the extra money to get true HD or a really good high quality, high resolution video image? And I'm also going to look at some other issues such as do these work in concert? If, if I'm running an analog system and someone else is running a ProSight, is there a problem with interference between either of them? That is to say, will the ProSight cause an issue with the, the, the standard def and will the standard def cause an issue with the ProSight? There's a lot of issues to address here, a lot of things to look at. So I'm making this pre-review video because I've tried to think of everything, but I know there's probably going to be other things that people want to know. Another thing that, of course, I'll be including is a spectrum analysis, a scan to see how much of the rest of the bands or that you know whether this affects with UHF whether it affects 2.4 and the same here I mean the pro side operates on 5.8 gigahertz but it has some pretty heavy computing power in there what are the spurious emissions of the pro site so if you wanted to use the pro site with a UHF radio link is it going to be a good choice or does it put a lot of noise out well I don't know I haven't tested it yet but I will be testing that as well but if there's something you want to see if there's any ideas you have for producing a video that's going to provide all the answers then please put your comments in the section below this video provided by YouTube and I will do my best to find out what you want to know and include it in the shootout video. Now, there are a lot of reviews of this ProSight system already on the net. It is designed as a mini quad system, they told me, a system for quads, but I'm going to be doing the testing on, probably on fixed wing initially, so we can do direct side by side. Now, the standard definition video, I'm going to record it on my Panasonic digit or DV camcorder. Because the DVRs that we've got, everyone's grizzling about them. The solid state DVRs that you get in your, in your video goggles or as a separate or part of your LCD screen. Honestly, they're crap. The, the bit rate is way too low. I cannot understand why on earth manufacturers of this gear don't bump the bit rates. We've got 16 gigabyte cards and recording SD, even at a really high bit rate, gives you hours and hours and hours of recording capability. So why limit yourself? to a very low bit rate, or something as stupid as Motion JPEG for the codec, that's the software that encodes it. It should be MP4, it should be high bit rate, so that it looks just like the stuff you see in your goggles, but it's not. I've yet to see a DVR produce anything like the quality of video on playback that you get from the direct video stream going into your goggles or your LCD screen. So I'm going to use my mini DV recorder, which does a damn sight better job than any of these digital DVRs. That way, when I show you the side-by-side -side footage, hopefully you'll be able to get a much better idea of the difference between really, really good standard def video and HD digital video. Now, I should mention at this stage, Runcam have sent me a lot of their products to review, and I thank them for that. Unfortunately, they haven't sent me a IR blocked 16.9 Eagle. So I'm going to use, I have to use what I've got. I've got one which doesn't have an IR filter, so the colours on this are going to look pretty crappy. I don't know, to be honest, I don't know why Runcam even bother making an eagle that isn't IR blocked. Because if you want IR sensitivity, get yourself an L or an L+. Plus. Those are cameras designed for low light use. So they, you know, they are sensitive to infrared. So this, I cannot see anyone using one of these as a night camera. It's just not really the best choice. Um, so please, Runcam, don't send me any more uh, eagles that, are, uh, that aren't IR blocked. I have a 4.3 eagle, which is IR blocked, but I don't have a 16.9. And I want to compare, this is a 16.9 system, and I want to compare apples with apples. This is a 16.9 system. So um, unfortunately, 
Um, ProSight is almost certainly going to win on color rendition. If Runcam want to send me an IR blocked version of the 16.9, um, I'm happy to look at it as in a different video. But uh, at the moment, I will review what I have before me. So there you go. That's basically it, a pre-review video. Don't get many of those because I want to make sure that I'm addressing all the issues you people want to see. So we're going to look at what is the best option for really good FPV video on the 5.8 gig bands. There you go. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.